Okay, everyone, uh, I'm excited to introduce another bird of the month. Uh, this month, we're going to talk about the avian reproductive cycle. And the reason we're going to do that is because uh, it's, it's currently July uh, here in Kentucky, and many of our birds are currently reproducing. And there's a lot of interesting aspects of bird biology that go along with that, um, many of which can be observed right in your backyard or in your own woodlot. Um, and going along with that, we're going to use a, a, a common uh, backyard and woodland bird to showcase that, the American robin. So the American Robin, we've talked about the American Robin on uh, the bird of the month before. Uh, the, the scientific name is Turtus migratorius, which is sort of a funny sounding name. Uh, Turtus is basically the Latin word for thrush. <clears throat> and the American Robin uh, doesn't necessarily look like other thrushes, which are typically brown and spotted. Um, but but it is. Um, they're, they're long legged birds that like to spend a lot of time on the ground. Um, and the American Robin certainly fits that description. Um, and of course, migratorious is a fairly straightforward term. Um, here in Kentucky, our American Robins uh, can be found in the state all year round, but especially in some of the higher elevation areas, American Robins are, are pretty hard to find in the winter time, or when you do find them, they tend to be in big flocks. Uh, so clearly the species is highly migratory. <clears throat> and American robins are, are well known uh, throughout North America as kind of being this uh, sort of uh, symbol of spring because in so many of the northern places, uh, the birds don't occur in the winter or are very rare in winter. Uh, so their return in large numbers uh, symbolizes uh, the coming of spring. Now, of course, uh, the American robin, uh, many folks are familiar with the plumage sort of a dark head, sort of a gray back, uh, and of course this, this reddish colored breast, um, white undertail coverts and belly, um, and a yellow bill with these white markings around the eyes and the throat. Now what a lot of folks don't realize is that the American Robin in many cases is pretty easy to sex. So here I've shown a male American Robin on the left, with this very dark black head and, and much uh, less extensive markings on the throat uh, and a very almost almost a brownish breast. It's really like a nice dark like ruddy color. And the female shown on the right tends to have much less black on the head so it's it's more of a uh, there's much more extensive gray on the head um, and the areas that are black on the male maybe are just like a sooty gray on the female. She has a lot more white on her face, just generally paler overall. The coloration on her back, so the gray is a lighter tone of gray. And of course, on the breast, we see it's a much lighter color of, of that reddish brown. It's, it's more of a, like a brighter pale orange. So relatively easy species to sex. So there's like your party trick. You can uh, amaze your friends that you can sex an American Robin. Um, now, uh, we, we've talked about identification visually and vocally before, but it's probably worth uh, covering it again, um, just because it's a really, uh, it's a lovely sounding bird. So their, their song, which we hear uh, throughout the spring and summer, is this rich kind of like almost slightly metallic kind of rolling, cheerily, cheerio, cheery up, cheerily, cheerio. Now, of course, in addition to the song, which is only produced by the male, uh, and he uses that to uh, attract a mate and to defend his territory, uh, both sexes produce a variety of calls, um, including a call that's often described as a, as a whinny call, kind of sounding like a little horse, but is, is a very common uh, call produced by both sexes. Now, in addition to those calls, if they're really, really agitated, uh, they'll make these really sharp peak, peak, 
calls followed by tut 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 calls. These are usually uh, alarm calls if you're disturbing a nest or a fledgling or something like that. So the American Robin produces a wide variety of vocalizations, very common backyard species, uh, but common in, in even heavily wooded places as well. So in springtime, uh, male and female American Robins kind of get together. Uh, the male sings that lovely song we just heard uh, to attract a mate. And when, when he finds a female that seems like she's interested, they undergo courtship. So this image on the left shows a male and he's got all these insects in his hand or in his hand, in his mouth, basically his hand uh, and, and a female, an adult female taking that food from him. And a lot of birds, the American robin included, will do this courtship feeding where the male will feed the female as part of their courtship display. And of course, shortly thereafter, the male and female begin to construct that, uh, that nest. So uh, within a few days of constructing the nest, um, American robins begin laying eggs. Uh, now, of course, many of us have heard the term robin's egg blue. And robins, uh, like uh, most thrushes, lay a bright blue egg. And, and it's a bit of a mystery as to why they lay a blue egg. It's kind of a strange thing. A couple of studies have attempted to determine why that might be. Um, it, it, it's clearly not for camouflage. Um, there have been studies that have looked at it. It doesn't seem to be a major factor that... Um, uh, it drives nest predation. Predators don't seem to key in on that, that blue egg very often. Uh, most predators, if they're going to find uh, the nest, they're going to find the nest first before they see the eggs. Um, they've also looked at whether there's a social signaling there, like maybe the female is attempting to demonstrate some level of quality or something like that with the egg color, and that didn't seem to really work out either. So as far as I know, the egg color is, is not well explained, but many thrushes have that, uh, that blue colored egg. Uh, and the female uh, alone sits on the nest. The male does not uh, sit on the nest at all. The female does all of that. And you can see this really weird picture I've got here in the upper left. That's, that is actually a, the wrinkly skin that's on the sort of breast and belly of an American robin female. And that's a, called a brood patch. Now a brood patch is like a highly vascularized uh, area of skin that uh, breeding condition birds have for laying, basically sitting on their eggs and then they lay that brood patch, that bare skin against their eggs to really help increase the area of contact between the bird and her eggs. So she'll sit on those eggs uh, basically 24 hours a day. I mean, she actually will take little breaks here and there to feed herself and drink and, and, and bathe and that sort of thing. But for the most part, uh, Mama Robin sits on those eggs all, all by herself. Um, and she's rotating those eggs every so often, pretty much constantly to keep the embryos uh, from, from attaching to one part of the egg or the other, keeps them rotating. Um, and, and keeps them warm at all times. So, and she's going to incubate those eggs for a couple of weeks. Now, after she's incubated those eggs for up to two weeks, of course, hatching occurs. Now, hatching uh, is, is a, it seems like a very straightforward process, but it's really not. Um, it can take up to 24 hours, and it begins with what's called pipping. And pipping is, is what I've got here in the upper left, where you've got the, the bird, the little baby chick, it, it pushes its beak against the shell and, and just pokes a little hole in that shell. That's called pipping, is that making that first, that first hole in the shell. And once the little uh, baby robin, the little, the little hatchling or 2B hatchling does that, what it's gonna do is, it, and it's got a little horn at the tip of its bill, that's a little carotinous horn that falls off within a, you know, a couple weeks. Uh, but it's got this little this little horn that's called an egg tooth, and it uses that little horn to, to basically make a path all the way around the egg, which is what I've kind of shown in this middle picture, to basically pop the cap of the egg off in one big piece. So you can see this little bird on the right is doing the same thing, basically created a, a, a little uh, path all the way around the egg. It, it basically unzips the egg and pops out. So that's how you can tell when you if you see an egg on the ground, 
that it's it's a successfully hatched egg is if if it's going to be uh, hatched all the way around like that, or if it's just a, a bunch of fragments, it's probably an egg that got eaten by a predator. So that little robin uh, uh, pops that egg open, and and now it, it goes from being an egg to what we call a nestling. So a little baby bird that's still in the nest is what we call a nestling, and you can see they're pretty ugly at this stage. Uh, this little guy, these ones that are hatching out the eggs look kind of naked. Um, and then these other ones, look, they don't look much better. <laughs> they just look kind of like a, a furry little rat. And these little downy feathers are these the first generation of feathers that the birds have when they hatch out of the egg. Well, and, and this is on the left here are, are nestlings again. They're two days old here on the left. And you can see they don't look a whole lot different. They're just fuzzier. Um, and they don't really have much in the way of true, like, avian feathers. I mean, they've got the, this, this down, but I mean, that technically is a type of feather. Um, but, but they don't have what we think of as, like, a proper feather. But by day seven, and, and they almost look more ugly at day seven, you can see that they're getting these, these like, dark areas on their back and these kind of little um, needly looking things on their wings. Well, those are what we call pin feathers. So those feathers are, are growing in and they're in that little shaft and that shaft contains the growing feather. And within a few days, that shaft is gonna burst open and the feathers inside are gonna pop out. So you can see day two, a two day old nestling on the left and a seven day old nestling on the right. I mean, it's quite a difference. They grow very fast. So let's look as these, these nestlings continue to grow. Well, here's a 10 day old, uh, a nest with 10 day old nestlings on the left. You can see those pin feathers are quite apparent, but they, they still don't look much like a bird. They're an ugly little gremlin basically. Whereas on the right, we've got day 13 nestlings. Now those are quite different. They're, they've, they, those pin feathers have popped open and it looks like an almost totally different bird. Uh, it actually is starting to look like a proper bird at that point. Now, a key thing here is is on the left and right, these are both nestlings. These are birds that are in the nest. They don't really do anything but beg for food and poop. Uh, so this is what we call a nestling. Now, these birds on the right, day 13, there, something very special is about to happen to those birds. They're about to fledge. When a bird fledges, the act of fledging is jumping out of the nest and beginning your life outside the nest. Well, when you do that, you go from being a nestling, which is what a bird is when it's in the nest, to a fledgling. And these birds, when they leave, they do not come back to the nest. They never see that nest again. So this little guy here with his mouth open on the right, he is about to become a fledgling probably the next day. So let's say about two weeks Well, he jumps out of the nest and he's on his own running around in the free world. Now he's, he's not totally on his own, but he is outside the nest and he's what we call a fledgling. So he's under the care of the parent or both parents. Uh, but it is no longer in the nest, so it is a fledgling. Now, it, it's important to remember that songbird fledglings, when they first leave, they often can't fly. And it's like, well, that's kind of crazy because you have this sort of picture in your head of like the mama bird kicking her babies out to learn to fly or whatever. But it doesn't exactly go that way in nature. More often, uh, the fledgling jumps out of the nest and for the first few days, they're running around on the ground or flopping. Or maybe even the first couple days, they're not even really able to do much in the, in the way of hopping and walking. They're just sitting there outside on a branch saying like, man, what did I just do? I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to be out of the nest or not. Um, but they, but they are, and they're still under the care of their parents. So even though they're, they're not in a nest, mom and dad are still bringing them food. So here on the right, this is a male robin bringing a fledgling some food. And you can see that fledgling, uh, is, is quite large. It's, it looks pretty different than the one on the left. The one on the left has very, very little in the way of a tail. Um, and it looks pretty, pretty, uh, scruffy. The bird on the right, that little fledgling is, is looking uh, significantly more like a, like a typical robin. Also note the plumage. So this bird is, is wearing what we call juvenile plumage or juvenile plumage. That juvenile plumage, in the case of the American robin, is this, is this spotted plumage where the adults don't have spots. The fledgling has spots. 
And that's probably a, a, a Robin's way of communicating to all the other Robins. Hey, hey, go easy on me. I'm just a little fledgling. You know, if, if, if I happen to stumble into the wrong guy's territory, don't beat me up. I'm just a young guy. You know, I'm not trying to start any trouble. Um, a note about fledglings, though, you'll see a lot of fledglings around this time of year. So in Kentucky, this is this is fledgling season. And, and you're going to find fledglings like this little guy, this little robin fledgling. And, and you may be able to pick them right up um, and, and, you know, bring them into your house. And you might might see that and go, man, there's something wrong with this bird. It needs my help. Um, I would say that resist the urge to do that. Um because these little fledglings, they're meant, they're meant to be outside. They're meant to be with their parents. And it's really easy to accidentally kidnap a little fledgling because it seems injured because it can't fly. But it's important to remember that a little baby fledgling can't fly. Uh, you know, that's normal for them to be unable to fly for the first couple days out of the nest. So if you find a little fledgling, just, just leave him be and watch him from a distance uh, and watch mom and dad taking care of the little guy. Now, of course, if there's a feral cat or if it's in the road or, you know, you're mowing the lawn and you find a fledgling, that's a different thing. If you're like mowing the lawn or if it's in the road, just shoo the little guy into the bushes or gently pick it up and put it into some shrubs. Or if it's in immediate danger of being killed by like a cat or something, um, then you might consider taking that bird to a wildlife rehabilitator. But generally, fledglings uh, are awkward and clumsy, and that's that's just how just how they are. And eventually, mom and dad stop taking care of that little bird, uh, that little fledgling. And, and as soon as mom and dad stop taking care of that little fledgling, and it's all on its own, it graduates from being a fledgling to a juvenile. So if we uh, look on this slide here, we've got a bird that looks very similar, uh, especially on the left, to the, to, the, to the fledgling on the back page. The key difference is this guy is, is all on his own. And mom and dad are not taking care of it anymore. It is now a juvenile, and it's still wearing that juvenile plumage. But notice the bird on the right is starting to lose its little spots. It's growing into uh, uh, its, its first adult plumage. And technically, the, the fancy ornithological term is it's growing into its formative plumage. And that'll be the plumage it wears over its first winter and, and into its first breeding season. Um, with that, that is a, an overview of the avian breeding cycle. I've already taken up a lot of your time, uh, but uh, uh, thank you for listening and uh, keep an eye out for those fledglings and those juvenile birds and uh, uh, enjoy our uh, native bird communities. Until next time.